I, I agree with you, and you can see that. Um, I think Albo's got that message from the focus groups, and that's why he is bringing this up time and time again. Um, usually you concentrate on your own policies rather than airing, you know, the oppositions, although, you know, the negativity does work. We know that. But is Dutton getting any points for actually taking a risk and being bold? Yeah, yeah. So there are particular voter cohorts where that, yeah, yeah. I might not even agree with nuclear energy, but, you know, good on him for, for putting up some ideas. Absolutely. That's, and that's a really interesting story in itself. So, but it was happening sort of even before um, nuclear energy. So, so it's sort of started to happen around voice. So there's, there's, a, what, there's a type of aspirational voter who was very, very much important to Scott Morrison's win in 2019, mm. that they were sort of scared off by some of the economic reform that, that Bill Shorten was talking about at that time, um, and left the coalition in 2022 because, you know, the, the, they didn't think ScoMo was doing a good job and, and, and had sort of let down the country and let down their sort of sense of aspiration. The way he handled COVID contributed to their economic stress, those sorts of things. Mm. That cohort has started coming back to the coalition. And we've, that's that's sort of been the key driver of their increase in, in primary that we've been seeing over these last few polls. And nuclear really cements that cohort. Um, so right. yeah, a- absolutely, there is a type of voter. Now, mm. how decisive that cohort is, because as I say, these are sort of once liberal voters sort of coming back home to roost. So how decisive that is in an electoral sense, I think, I think is a different question. It certainly makes Labor's job harder. It certainly makes minority government harder. But th- there's probably not enough of them in those key seats to sort of return coalition okay. to government. All right, one final quick question here, because I think one of the things that this whole nuclear debate has done is concentrated the mind on n- renewables plus what? Because the government wants to focus on, um, you know, almost 100% renewables. We know that's not achievable. They know that um, because it's in the targets. But by the time we get to 2050 and we're, uh, you know, there's a bipartisan agreement on net zero, there still needs to be 10 to 20% of that firming capacity. Um, and whether that is, you know, it's not going to be coal but it needs to either be gas or nuclear or green hydrogen. Green hydrogen, not economically viable at the moment. Batteries, not quite up to speed. Is there an understanding within these focus groups that that firming capacity is required as well as renewables and it's all tied to price? Look, I'd say that's still, you know, and all these ideas that need to be prosecuted over the coming period, that's one that does. That, that, that idea does certainly doesn't come up that, that often in, mm. in um, folks. And, and that's, really, and that's really helping, isn't it? You know, that's that's the that's thing. Right. They're not, that's not focusing the mind of, of voters at the moment as to what happens. Um, and that's a potential opportunity for the coalition, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And it's... So, so there is certainly there's certainly sort of an understanding that we need a mix, you know. And, and most folk at the moment, when they think of that mix, if you know, when I think about what we talk about in the focus group, what comes up, that mix in their imagination is probably more renewables plus gas mm-hmm. um, for for most folks. So, whether again, whether Dutton can land nuclear as part part of that mix sort of remains to be seen the challenge, but. But certainly it's um, it, it's a renewables-heavy future that most people think of when, when they turn their minds to it. Always great to talk to you, Simon. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Laura.